Hallo, EWG Brüssel. Yes, common market, Brüssel. 50 years ago, the priority for the European community of six countries was building up Europe's economy. Industry was developing fast, but with very few controls. Smog was already a big problem in some cities. And Europe's love affair with the car was moving into top gear. By the 1970s, Rotterdam in the Netherlands, today the largest port in the world, had become a major center for the petrochemical industry. In the, year 70, in the 1970s, the air quality situation was very bad. There was an enormous smog problem, just like London, which was very bad for people. We still have memories of schools being closed because it wasn't reasonable to send kids to school, to allow them outside. All over Europe, acid rain was destroying the forests, and environmental activists were starting to make their presence felt. The sort of prototypical struggle in air stuff was over the acid rain issue. As usual, there were noises from the scientific community, observations of damage happening, and then the activists getting a hold of the issue and turning it into something in, in a form that could be brought to the general public. And lo and behold, the general public did care. The Netherlands was one of the first countries to bring in tough air quality legislation, which in 1980 was backed up by Europe-wide laws. Now you see chimneys which emit practically nothing, which are clean. And that comes thanks to the measures which industry took, first by putting filters on chimneys, and later on with pressure from European laws, there were much more integrated measures. Today in Rotterdam, sulfur dioxide readings are down 80% from 1970 levels. Throughout Europe, similar dramatic reductions in SO2 have had a huge impact on acid rain. And today, an online emissions register records pollutants emitted from a wide range of industries in Europe. Current EU law requires industry to use the best available technology, best for the environment and best for boosting economic growth and employment. But while Western Europe was doing its bit to clean up its act, it was another story in the East. This area bordering Poland, the Czech Republic and East Germany became known as the Black Triangle, a highly industrialized region with smog an almost permanent feature in the 1980s. In the Czech town of Usti nad Labem, this pediatrician told us that a quarter of his young patients had suffered from respiratory diseases and asthma. I think the pollution was very bad in every sense, not just for respiratory diseases. Because of the bad air, the children lost a lot of their general resistance. But in 1991, the prospect of EU membership made all the difference. The Black Triangle project was launched with backing from the EU a massive program to switch power stations to natural gas. Underground thermal energy was exploited, factories closed or modernized. Within a decade, pollution levels which had reached 30 times European limits were brought well within the norm. Throughout all the countries joining the EU, air quality was dramatically improved. But there remains the growing volume of traffic on our roads. There are three times as many vehicles in Europe as there were in the 1970s. The EU has worked with the car industry to reduce emissions through catalytic converters, to reduce fuel consumption and promote cleaner fuels. But over the last decade, new medical research produced disturbing results. We're all seeing our lives shortened by around nine months due to the effect of breathing in ultra-fine particles polluting the air. Technology has been developed to filter out these emissions from new diesel engines. The next challenge is dealing with particle emissions from small power plants and domestic heating systems. In the region, about 370,000 people will die prematurely every year uh, from health-related problems associated with air pollution. These particles enter people's lungs, um, and particularly the small ones. They enter the lung, and then it's very hard for your, your natural biological systems to remove these particles. So they interact with your lungs, and, for example, if you're asthmatic, uh, they will cause you severe problems. This new urgency prompted the launch of a new EU strategy on air. The aim to reduce deaths from air pollution by around 45 percent by 2020, through tough new proposals on emissions, extending legislation to include marine transport and agriculture. 
also changing behavior, continuing to promote public transport and cycling, clean fuels and renewable energy. With climate change center stage, the European Union 50 years on is gearing up for its next challenge to give Europe more breathing space.